It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'm filming an old school type of video because back in 2014, 2015, 2016, and so on, it was like really, really common to actually make videos talking about the crazy stuff that feminists do all the time. And naturally, of course, one of the biggest things that's been going on on Twitter is this tweet that's been by a feminist. And naturally, of course, I cannot help but to respond to it to give you guys some more content. And so without further hesitation, let us respond to the tweet that was done by the feminist. Not all men. As humans, we generalize things. For example, we say, be careful with ticks, they may carry Lyme disease. But no one says, actually, not all ticks carry Lyme disease, because logically, we all understand that enough ticks carry Lyme disease to put you at risk at being affected. When we speak up about women's oppression and abuse, obviously we know it's not all men, but when one in three women are assaulted by a man in their lifetime, is enough men to make all women afraid. Is enough men that when I'm walking home alone at night, I have to assume that it's all men to keep myself safe. Just like I have to act as though that all ticks have Lyme disease. When you make our abuse about you, it doesn't help anyone. Not all men. We know it's not all men, but it's enough men to keep us in a constant state of fear. When I saw these series of tweets for the first time, I couldn't help but notice the very Nazi-esque language in it because back in the past, the Jews were also dehumanized because basically the Nazi would say like, oh my god, the Jews are like, you know, these sort of bugs, these sort of rats or whatever. And so, this sort of Nazi-esque language is probably the main reason why so many people call feminists feminazis. Now let's look at the data. Now she claims that one in three women are victims of sexual assault by men. However, if you look really deep into the data, the whole entire statistic is actually very misleading. Now this whole entire data point was debunked by Forbes magazine, which goes into great detail about the various flaws of the study. Quote, Readers of the Los Angeles Times who have daughters at the University of Southern California must have had quite the shock this morning when they woke up to the headline that one of the four female undergrads said that they were sexually assaulted on campus. At USC, it's nearly one in three. These numbers are based off a survey by the Association of American Universities. This is a terrifying statistic indeed. If true, it means that the UFC and other campuses are far more dangerous for places of women than most war zones. Fortunately, it isn't true, or at least it doesn't mean what most people presumably think it means. First of all, according to the LA Times, the response rate to the survey was very low, just 21.9%. By contrast, the 2009 College Women's Sexual Violence Survey had about an 86% response rate and reported far, far lower rates of sexual assaults, less than 3% of graduate women. Similarly, I discussed in an early report, a 2014 survey by the Bureau of Justice Statistics, asked students if they'd ever been raped or sexually assaulted. The survey produced results far lower than the surveys discussed above. Less than 1% of women reported that they had been sexually assaulted in any given. Another reason for skepticism is about the very high numbers from the Association of American University Survey is that the AAU survey defines sexual assault an extremely broad matter that is bound to produce high numbers. For example, it includes kissing, which means if your boyfriend kiss you in your sleep, that would count as sexual assault. More importantly, the survey incorporated the assumption that any sexual contact without affirmative consent is sexual assault. As you guys can see, the survey is really, really bad science because not only does the survey have a low participation rate for the whole entire thing, 
but also it defines stuff like kissing as well as like you know nonverbal consent as sexual assault. Thus, it actually produced a really, really high number in comparison to other studies that's been done by this subject. But let's just say for the sake of argument that that data point is actually true, that yes, every single last man must be guilty because you see that data point is true. Now, according to data, of course, the vast majority of black people in this country in comparison to other groups commit the most crimes. So is it actually perfectly fine for me to actually say, well, you see, yes, all black people are criminals because according to the data, it shows that black people commit the most crimes. Oh no, let's get even more extreme, even more extreme. Well, you see, the vast majority of terrorist attacks that's been committed by religion so far happen to be Islam. And so therefore, every single last Muslim must be some sort of terrorist. As you guys can see, this type of language, if you actually switch a different race of people, or if you switch like a religious group, basically it would be like, you know, racism as well as religious bigotry against those who follow a different faith than you. And so this type of language is dehumanizing to those who happen to be male because it's obvious that not every single last man had to feel guilty by association. Not only does this whole entire argument seem to justify racism and religious bigotry, but also it's really dumb to place value on a bug in comparison to a human because most people, of course, naturally connect more with other people because men are people's brothers, their uncles, their freaking friends, and their fathers, and they're also the breadwinner of the family. And so naturally, we put a bigger emphasis on mankind in comparison to, you know, bugs, because we have deeper connections with other human beings. I mean, think about it. Men contribute like a lot of stuff to society. They construct buildings. They, of course, are the fathers of various daughters and sons. They provide for the family. They, of course, work for the government. And so men have a way more higher worth and value to other mankind in comparison to something as minuscule as a bug. But yeah, that's my whole entire response to those tweets. That was like really, really stupid. Of course, the value of a man is way higher in comparison to a bug, and yes, the whole entire language and the data point was very inaccurate. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.